it, it's not sinking in. It's not. It really is not sinking in. Why would you bother? Until you slip the camera into infrared, and then you get. Welcome back to the incredible Cape Kidnappers Coast. We've got a stinking hot day, cloudless blue sky, high sun overhead. Not usually great for taking photographs. That was until I got my X-Pro2 infrared modified. And now it's the perfect time. Get a few graphic photographs with this beautiful, beautiful new setup. All right, enough, let's go. Any other day, I wouldn't even bother getting the camera out of the bag for this. Why would you bother? Why would you bother? Until you slip the camera into infrared. The sky is perfect for infrared, it really is. Word on the lens that I'm using, it's going to be the 14mm Fujinon XF lens, which I just recently picked up from a local auction site for a stupid price. They're normally going in New Zealand for about $1,200. I picked it up for 355. Oh, 355. That's just a giveaway. It's a steal, actually. Uh, so to the seller, thanks a lot, mate. Appreciate it. Now that is Cape Kidnappers. The Maori name is Tikoai Amaui, which means the hook of Maui, I believe. My brain's not working today. All I'm thinking about is photographs. Now I could sit down here and waffle on about uh, the infrared spectrum and visible light spectrum. I've watched so many videos on it. You'd think I'd know. It, it's not sinking in. It's not. It really is not sinking in. Uh, I start listening to these explanations about how infrared works and to be honest with you, my mind drifts away to planning photographs. So the technical side of it, I don't know so much. Uh, but all I know is the camera does what it does and it's up to me to do what I do. And that makes, uh, hopefully, a winning team. Let's buzz about and get a few photographs. And this is the thing that I love about this coastline. You've got so many different rock formations that blend into one another and it just makes some beautiful foreground interest the whole way through. And just take a look at this. How <laughs> cool is that? And look at that, I mean, shit, that'd be quite a boring shot. Wait till you see it in infrared. <laughs> oh, mate, seriously. I'm trying to get the camera as low to the ground as I can but still have the pinnacle poking through. I haven't got a tilty screen and I'm in quite a tight position here so I can't really see what I'm pointing it. So it's a little bit of hit and hope. That big rock there on the left hand side, I just want the top of that to break the ocean horizon. Otherwise it looks a bit naff. But if you sort of lower it down quite a ways and get the, I don't know if that's actually getting it, I can't see. It's so bright out here, my eyes are blind. I can't see a thing and I can't bend my back far enough down to see if that's uh, what I'm pointing at. But you get the idea, you'll, you'll see the photograph. This is just a photographer's paradise. And again, what I want to do is use these different rocks and slabs and just to give some different textures to the photograph. It gives it plenty of foreground interest. Here we've got a protruding rock and we're just gonna frame this rock around the headland. I'm gonna shoot at F8, ISO 200, and that is giving me at the moment 127 for the second. That's a little bit tight. So what we're gonna do is bump up the ISO a little bit ISO 400, that'll give me a 50th, which is fine. That's no problem at all. I'm almost blind because it's, uh, man, it's so bright out here. The glare off the water, the glare off the light rocks, my shirt, oh, my, I'm, I'm sunblind. This water, this light water is standing out jet black. It's surrounding that central rock and it's just making the rock pop so nicely. Honestly, Oh, shit. Save the day there, mate. So I've got this big rock in the foreground, load of smaller rocks around it. So what I can see now, one long slabby rock there and three, four rocks in the foreground, a bit of a rock pull, which is rendering as, as jet black. I can't believe the difference this infrared is making. ISO down to ISO 200 again, which is giving me a F8, a 50th. I ain't going any further on this slab because I've just gone tail of a shit. Landed flat on my ass, flat on my back, give my head a bit of a knock. 
no sense knocked into it though, so uh, no damage done. But uh, yeah, I ain't going any further. <laughs> My arms, both arms went up into the air trying to save the camera gear, which, uh, which I've done. That's good. <laughs> I went down like I've been shot with a sniper. No more, no more of that. And I found this slab amongst the pebbles, which is pointing right out to the headland. Now from here, that sort of humpback rock in the water, plenty of texture on it, that might make a nice foreground for the headland. Let's go have a look. Don't fall. These are pretty cool because uh, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say they're not slippy. Uh, I'm not going to jinx it, but yeah, these are okay to walk on so far. That's the rock I'm talking about. How cool is that? Is it going to work? Is it going to work? I think it could do. We're going to stick with F8. ISO 200, and that's giving me a 50th. Oh, this does look nice. A lot of texture in there. A lot of blacks from the water, blacks from the sky. Nice. So look at that boy. Oh, that does look nice. Let me just come back a little bit. Let's try this. Let's get a oh, shine a light. Oh. There's a lot of tripping hazards around this beach and I'm pretty prone to falling over. Let's get a little bit higher for this one. Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. I do like that one. Just got a little bit of a wave coming in. Stands out quite nice. It gives you a bit of a highlight against the black. And on this slab, we've got this natural circular pool. Look at that. I mean, how good's that? And that is going to be shot from a low angle, kind of like that. Now this area is one of my favourites. You've got the leading lines of the slabs in the foreground. You've got the pebbles, different textures, ocean, and a stunning, stunning backdrop. What is not to like? If I can't make a nice photograph here, there's something seriously wrong. What an absolutely glorious place. And worryingly, I've got it to myself. That's generally a sign that uh, everybody has got out of dodge before the tide comes back in. So I don't think I'll hang about much longer. There's a tip of a rock just on the corner there, and I want that to break the horizon. Otherwise, it's going to look stupid. Slip this up to F11. Let's get a little bit more depth of field in there. That's giving me 25th of a second now, though. I might just bump the ISO up to 400, because I do want to make this shot count. And a little bit of extra noise won't bother me as much as a blurry shot. So uh, now we're getting 50th of a second, F11, ISO 400. Just edge round a little bit. No, I prefer down here. There's a lot more texture in the rocks this side. But again, we've just got to get that balance right between keeping the pinnacle in the shot and keeping the foreground rocks breaking the horizon. Beautiful, beautiful. And the peak I was talking about is that one there. And as you can see on the video footage here, it's below the ocean line, the horizon line. And it looks a bit, eh, looks a bit naff. You break the horizon line with that peak and it just, ah, it just fits. I reckon it just fits anyway. Let me know what you think. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've got something from it. A few little tips along the way. If nothing else, thanks for watching. And until next time, catch you later.